now we are going to transition to the next portion of the Great Lakes State Football Podcast, episode one here. We have our guest picker, our guest on for the evening, Mr. Brett Johnson, Brett Johansson, or <laughs> as many people from Grand Valley and the Lansing area have come to know him as. Mm. If you don't know that one, uh, I'm sorry, that's an inside joke there, but Brett, how you doing, man? <laughs> Vince, I'm good. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited to be here. Nothing better than the end of football season. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And uh, we're going to have Brett on here to help us make some picks uh, for the MHSAA state playoffs. Obviously, we're down to the state championship games this coming weekend. We got the evens on Friday and the odds on Saturday. So we're going to kind of go through here starting with division eight and Brett, Corey and I are all going to make our picks and uh, gentlemen, what do we got here? We just talked about what we got riding on the, uh, the winner. We have a, we we're going to have picks for these eight games and uh, what's the winner getting here. Beers. Beers. A, a growler of beers. But Brett was very specific. What was the specified beer? This is your this, ad opportunity, Brett. Give it, a, give us the ad right Is here. this our NIL? Get, Can we get an NIL for Brick? <laughs> we're giving a, uh, a shout. I think the NIL is to you, Vince, the, the <laughs> member of the Mug Club at Brickhaven Brewing, Grand Lodge, Michigan. Oh yeah, baby! Free growler of beer, sponsored by the loser. So Ed and I'll Ben. Take, uh, Ed and Ben, where are you guys at? Ed and Ben, where are you at? Get our sponsorship over here for the podcast, the Brickhaven Brewing Company sponsorship. So the winner. I'll take. Uh, uh, I'll take their black IPA, Corey and Vince. Just the so Onyx you know. Edge, baby. The Onyx Edge, yep. The Onyx Edge, the great. Eaton County, the Eaton County Bitter. ECB. Oh, that's ECB. another great oh, that's a good one. In Grand Ledge, Michigan, man. Brickhaven's got some great beers. So the losers will be buying a growler of beer for the winner from Brickhaven Brewing Company in good old Grand Ledge, Michigan. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, when we're done going through our picks, we will also talk uh, for a little bit about Michigan football, Michigan State football, and uh, we're going to do some picks for those, uh, hopefully as tiebreakers if there's a tie for the playoff picks. All right, so starting first here, we have Division 8, uh, Beale City beat Ubley, and Hudson beat Ottawa Lake Whiteford. So you got Beale City and Hudson for the Division 8 state championship uh beale city and hudson both pretty big division eight powerhouses in terms of football i just told these guys before we started beale city has not has only missed the playoffs five times since 1980 quite an impressive stat uh if you want to go ahead guest picker brett johnson who you got for this game beale city or hudson i think i'm gonna go with hudson here a little bit of a family story one of my second cousins his name is hudson and he was named after the city Hudson. My first cousins drove through town on the highway and they saw the name Hudson and they decided to name their firstborn son Hudson. So I'm going to go Hudson here. That's deep. It's deep. Corey, who you got? All right. After doing some in-depth research, I just saw that Hudson has pitched seven shutouts this year in 13 games which is only thing you would ever be able to do that is eight-man football. So for them to do it in Division Eight, it's even more impressive. Um, so I am also going with Hudson. Yeah, that was something that stuck out to me, too, as I was looking here was defense. Um, obviously, Division Eight football, I don't want to you know, disparage Division Eight football, but there tends to be kind of a big gap <laughs> at the lower levels in terms of the really good – like. D six, seven, and eight, like the really good teams tend to just trash everybody, destroy everybody. Um, but it's still impressive nonetheless when you can shut out that many teams uh, in a season. And I also see that Beale City, while they had one loss on the year and it was by one point their first game of the season, it was to Ravenna team that while they did make the playoffs, doesn't quite have you know the success and the history that these two teams have. So that makes me think that maybe Beale City has some weaknesses. Um, they also had a forfeit win, so one less game that they did play this year. Uh, I think Hudson is the pick for me as well. Um, they both had pretty close wins in their semifinal games 
uh, uh, Hudson one by six and Beale City one by five. So both pretty close games there. But yeah, I think I'm going to go with Hudson as well. So I'm writing this down too. So Hudson, you good. got you got it right. I was going to have to go th- back through the footage, but if you're going to write yep. it down, great. Hudson, you're good. I'll make a little spreadsheet here. and send it, and I'll send it to you. Hudson, all I'm ready around. to go. All right. So going to the next one here. Let's move on. We got Division Seven playoffs, and we are going to. Uh, talk a little bit here. We do have a local team in the state championship from the Lance. All three of us are from the Lansing mid Michigan area, Puam Westvalia back to the state championship for what the fourth time now, I think in uh, the last six years, five years, something like that. They've been to the state title four times. I think they've won it twice, two or three times. There was one time they, they were runner up uh, Traverse city. St. Francis was who PW beat at Cedar Springs last week. And I think that's a really impressive win. Uh, if you're not, from the state of Michigan, Traverse City, St. Francis has produced quite a few for such a small school has produced quite a few division one players, especially Michigan state, the uh, Bola family. It's got quite a long lineage of players, uh, Traverse City, St. Francis, quite a bit of history in football. So PW beat them 28, 21, pretty impressive. Lawton also who they are playing a pretty impressive win beat Jackson Lumen Christie by one point. Jackson Lumen Christie is another, uh, fairly perennial, big time, powerhouse. perennial powerhouse and small school football in the state of Michigan. Uh, they tend to get another, a lot of D one talents because they're a private school. So it's kind of hush, hush, but hush, hush, but they can recruit. Wink, Shh, wink. Don't tell uh, them that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. The everyone crazy, knows. The, everyone knows the, crazy, the Catholic schools recruit. Let's be real. The here. crazy stat about Jackson Lumen Christie is that they fund uh, uh need, uh, what am I trying to say here? They knee fund rack. like braces knee or something. Rack, knee, knee braces for their whole team, which is crazy. Do they and really? Does that? Yes. We that is insane. So we scrimmage. We've scrimmaged. <laughs> you Lumen would, you would know that fact. Well, we've scrimmaged <laughs> Lou Christie like every year for five years now, and they always have all their old linemen have the knee braces, which you don't usually see that in high school, especially a small school. Well, they had yeah. the they had the guy that played for state and plays for the Colts now. The safety, what's his name? I'm um, yeah, Kari, change with Nate, Kari Willis, Kari Willis, Willis. Yeah, yep. Kari Kari Willis. Willis. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know they get a lot of impressive talent. Yeah, Lumen Christie has made the playoffs every year since 1998. Pretty impressive run. They've won eight or nine state titles at this point. So that's a big time win for Lawton by one point. Lawton is undefeated. <laughs> Uh, having their best season in school history, most wins in school history. Um, I personally think PW, I'll go ahead and start us off here. I think PW wins another one. PW, um, from reports from what I've heard, has lost a lot of guys to injuries this year and is still finding ways to win. Uh, Apparently they're quite quite far down, (laughs) the Pirates, quite far down the roster for quarterbacks, and I think it was their running backs too um, that they kept suffering injuries. But uh, PW has given up um, only 88 points on the year, and 42 of those points have come in the playoffs. So that's really Ooh. impressive. Half those points were 21 to Ooh. New Lothrop, who's really good, and 21 to St. Francis. So um, PW also played a really impressive schedule. They beat Lansing Catholic. Uh, they beat Olivet. Uh, they beat uh, Redford Union, who's a Division Four school, three divisions higher than them. Um, so they played, and obviously Fowler's a decent D8 school, beat Ithaca, New Lothrop, St. Francis. Uh, pretty impressive wins for PW. I think they win. I think they're state champions for the, I think it'd be third time. I'll follow you up with that, Vince. I think PW is going to win. Um, I checked it out in the last six years. They've gone to five state titles. The only year they didn't was last year, which was COVID and they had a forfeit. So um, I did some research on the Twitter sphere and found some video footage of the lot and whatever they are. And they looked not great. So I'm going to go with local team PW. All right, I think that brings it to me. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm going with I'm going with PW too. We're uh, we're all picking the same. Here we go. Here, um, you know the PW guys. Those guys. I mean, even if they weren't still playing football, they'd be spending Thanksgiving together. It's just one big family over there in Puamo. Yeah, between the Phelan's, the Phelan's, the Smiths, and the True Eyes, that's the whole team. It's one big family. They got the chemistry. I'm going with I'm going with the Pirates. You don't forget the Cooks are from Puamo. Don, my, my grandpa, Donald Cook 
from Poamo, Michigan. Poamo, Westphalia. Or Westphalia. There you go. He's yeah. born in Westphalia. They're uh, deep. <laughs> Lineage they are, is deep. I mean, you joke, but that <clears throat> that community is very tight. That's a very tight, close-knit community, and I think that's represented in their football program for sure. Jeremy Miller, got out, man, of, got out of PW. Jeremy Miller, that coach, he's had 100 wins in – nine seasons and he hasn't even had in five in five seasons <laughs> nine nine no no, I know. no nine no yeah. i know but it feels like yeah he coaches the jv team year. too <laughs> but dude he hasn't even had 10 losses yet i think he's got like one uh, loss a year since he started coaching there i don't think he's lost more than two games in a season he has like nine losses crazy. and i think two or three of them were in state titles or semifinals I mean, he's got quite an impressive run going there. So, all right, let's move on here to Division Six. Uh, we have another Lansing area team, Mid Michigan team, in the Division Six state championship. Uh, Lansing Catholic, excuse me, and I believe this is Lansing Catholic's third appearance in the last ten years. They lost uh, in 2011 in the state title. They won two years ago or maybe this is their fourth appearance because didn't they go to the state title was that last year i'll pull it up right now uh they lost the semifinals last year they did win the state championship in 2019 um and then in 2014 they lost the state title in 2011 so this is their fourth state title appearance in 10 years 2019 was their first state championship uh since they won one Back in 1985, they went 13-0 in 1985. But Lansing Catholic, man, um, pretty impressive schedule as well. They lost at Puan Westphalia by five points uh, right at the end of that game. They beat a really good Williamston team. Um, they beat Portland. That was one of the big upsets in the area earlier this mm-hmm. year. Uh, Portland was undefeated, had, had a huge upset over DeWitt, which we'll get to here shortly. And they actually had a huge lead on Portland. Portland came back to take the lead with a two-point conversion with like two minutes left, 29-28. And then Lansing Catholic won on a last-second field goal. Very impressive win, 31-29. Um, so, yeah, Lansing Catholic, and they are playing Michigan Collegiate. Um, and I believe Mich- is Michigan Collegiate the team that very sadly had the tragedy with the um, – or am I thinking of a different team who had the players who passed away – they were uh, former players who passed away at at uh, Faster Horses uh, last year. I think that's year. a different oh. team. I think that's that Michigan might, Center. Was yeah. that Michigan Center, not Michigan Collegiate? Yeah. Okay. And actually, that either was way, who they just it's beat. a Michigan unfortunate Center. situation. Well, Michigan Center had a heck of a run. I think that that was who they just beat. Michigan Collegiate beat Michigan Correct. Center in the okay. semifinals. Uh, so that's, I did see that story somewhere that that was like a big story. But Michigan Collegiate is a school that's only 13 years old in terms of football. Uh, so they are a very young football program. They just started their football team in 2008, uh, didn't play a full season until the next year in 2009. They've made the playoffs every year since 2009. Uh, this is their first state title appearance though. Um, I'm not as, I'm somewhat impressed. They played Detroit country day. That was one of their losses. Got beat by Milan. Um, I will let, let's have Corey hasn't gone first yet. Corey, you go first. Let's see what your pick is. first. All right. I am going to go with Warren, Michigan collegiate. What's your reason? What are you backing up here? I just I don't like LCC. <laughs> gut, <laughs> gut check, gut check. Brett, what do you got? I gotta stay with the hometown team. I'm going with Lansing Catholic. They've uh, they got a great program. Shout out! I already mentioned his name earlier, but shout out to um, Cooper Rush, former Chippewa. Started for yep. the Cowboys a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that was a cool. On story. late night football for in for place of Dak Prescott, that was really cool. Had some. He actually got the win. He got did the win. Yep. Very impressive. Got to be, I can't remember the last NFL quarterback that, besides from Kirk Cousins, that started a game. So good to see that. And then also Tony Poljan. I don't know that. I think he was on the 2014 team. Um, that led LC to the Ford Field. Um, he played for Minnesota and then transferred to Virginia as a tight end. He was supposed to go to Michigan State, and then he transferred out of there. He played he with uh, the older brother at Hillsdale for a short stint as well. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Is, he, uh, is he a Cougar as well? 
Yes. And uh, his first name escapes me. He was a freshman my senior year, so I didn't really get to know him very well. But um, yeah, the pole Jans have a lot of talent. There's quite a few. Because uh, I think, is there three of them? There's either three or four of them, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, don't know. I thought there was only one. Seems like there's more. But yeah, no, I'm going with Cougars. At least three. Um, I am also picking Lansing Catholic. I am pretty impressed with some of their wins. I, I mean, obviously, Lansing Catholic has played also beaten some teams that aren't very good. But um, I think they're battle-tested. Be- lo- playing at Paul was failure, their last game of the year. Um, they beat Standish Sterling who uh, had a pretty impressive season, although Stan Sterling, it was one of their best seasons in a while. Um, but they also beat Montague, uh, or is it Montag? Montague? Mon- Mon- Montague. Montague. Okay, I, think, I, saw, I thought I pronounced Montague. it right. Montague. I would just hey, wanted to you? check. Hey, I didn't want to sound you? like a jackass, so I was glad I said it right the first time. Montague is another one of these storied, smaller teams. I mean, they're another program that has won multiple state titles. Uh, Montague was the defending Division Six state champs. So Lansing Catholic knocked off uh, pretty handily the defending six state champs. Uh, Michigan Collegiate also should have had three wins. One of their lo- one of their wins was a forfeit win. Chandler Park beat them and apparently forfeited it later on. So technically they should have three losses. So I just think Lansing Catholic, uh, um, I think they're going to take this one. All right, let's uh, move on here to the next division. Let's go Division 5. And in Division Five, we have in the semi or excuse me in the state cha- semifinals in the state championship we got Grand Rapids Catholic Central Division Five powerhouse uh, and Marine City. Marine City beat uh, Mich- Mid Michigan local team Portland, so another le- Greater Lansing area team Portland, who has had a lot of success um, over the last ten years. Well, went all the way to the semis and uh, got beat by Marine City. Uh, Marine City, though, is is no slouch either. Um, I'm going to go with Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Uh, I'll kick us off here. Uh, Grand Rapids Catholic Central, from what I've heard, has several D1 prospects on that team. They always do. All the Catholic League schools, no matter how big or small, seem to always get some of the best talent in their area. And from what I've heard, Grand Rapids Catholic Central is no exception. So I am going to go with Grand Rapids Catholic Central for the Division Five state championship. You can take it, Brett. All right, I can go next. I'm going GRCC as well. You know, in the last six years, they have four losses. And in the playoffs this year, they've had 12 points against. They're a pretty, uh, pretty strong program. Like Vince mentioned, they have Division One guys. They got a guy going to Notre Dame this year. They got a junior quarterback. They'll probably go power five, low power five next year. They're a strong program here. Living in Grand Rapids, they got to go with the Grand Rapids team. So, once again, go I'm right. I'm right there with Brett. I'm going to go with GRCC. I was actually at the Portland Marine City game. Uh, my brother plays for Portland. And it was probably the sloppiest football game I've ever seen. Portland had five turnovers inside the 40. One of them was a scoop and score. Um, for Marine City, and then Portland also dropped a scoop and score um, of their own, and so they it just was a bad game. And they had a touchdown also called back late in the game. So um, I didn't have really – I didn't see anything out of Marine City that I thought, hey, this is going to even compete with Grand Rapids Catholic. Um, a buddy of mine actually coaches at Frankenmuth, um, and after talking to him, Grand Rapids Catholic was just – better than they were. I mean, there wasn't any questions or if ands, buts or coconuts. So GRCC for me. Yeah. I, I think we, we, we shouldn't pass over the fact that Marine city is also, while they might not be the powerhouse recently that Grand Rapids Catholic central is Marine city has quite a bit of history. Uh, Marine city has missed the playoffs once since 1998 and has had two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 10 or more win seasons um, and been to yeah, it's multiple, a good program. Yeah. And they've been and won multiple state championships as well. I just think Marine city as much history as they have and as good as they are, I think they are running into a current. I don't know if I'd use the word dynasty with high school football, but Grand it's Rapids, a dynasty. Well, it's like a you dynasty. just said, Brett, the stretch that GRCC is on over the last six seasons is incredible. And normally they play <laughs> – normally sometimes they play D4 too. It is. It's, 
it's, it's almost it's like insane. that Ithaca run. Yeah. I mean, like Brett said, they have uh, four losses in six years, and two of those were in state championships, and another one was in a semifinal. So very impressive run. Three undefeated seasons in that time as well. Um, so as good as Marine City is, as much history as they have, I just think they're running into a better team in Grampus Catholic Central. So, all right. If I if I could just add something real quick here, absolutely. I you know it's been a topic in the MHSAA for so long. They need to segregate parochial schools and public schools. It just it needs to happen. How would it's, you? So this is good, enough this schools. Is a, this is a good stopping point because we've gotten through. We've we're halfway exactly through. halfway through. So good good stopping point before we finish the other half. How would you do that though, with us with the state already having ten divisions if you count the two eight man divisions? So would I you realign we, that whole thing? I think what you do is you you knock down the public schools to six divisions, and then okay. you have two divisions for the parochial schools. You have a one and you got a two. You get the big ones. The one you big, have like big, the big dogs, yeah. like the Ole inner Saint city Mary, Catholic schools, Warren yeah. De La Salle, yada yada yada. You know, it might actually be a, a more condensed playoff because there's not as many teams. But a lot of those, a lot of those parochial schools play teams from out of state, anyways. But it needs to happen. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's not fair to the kids that go to the public schools that are playing with their buddies that they grew up with in the same neighborhood, and then you got a team like Grand Rapids Catholic Central that they probably got a guy from every corner of the town of Grand Rapids. It's it's not fair. And, you know, you got to respect the programs like that. They got great players, great coaches. But if you're They've pulling guys from disease. outside of your area, like the transfer portal is one thing in college. You're essentially, you got the transfer portal in MHSA. And it's, it's just, it's not fair. And I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I agree with you in the sense that it's definitely a glaring problem in the state of Michigan where, um, in plenty of years past, at least four of the eight state champions were Catholic schools, sometimes yeah. more. Um, and it's what you're saying is they are poaching. You know, we kind of talked about earlier, and it is tends to be a little bit taboo in the state of Michigan, but some of those Catholic schools poach from other communities, right? They take kids away. And, you know, I don't, I'm not saying there's necessarily anything illegal being done. You know, I'm sure there are some things that being done that gets, you know, that not talked about, but at the same time, you know, kids can choose to go to a Catholic school they want to, but when high school coaches in small town communities, like a Portland, for example, we were just talking about those St. Coaches, Pat's, they got one. It's just, they of- have one too, but Portland St. Pat's is <laughs> yeah, they're, di- they're eight, eight man. man. They're eight yeah. man. Cause they're so small. Yeah. Um, but those coaches at a school like Portland can't drive around the area and go recruit kids. You can't do right. that. I mean, it's not possible, but those Catholic schools, they can, because guess what? You can live wherever you want. And as long as you enroll here, because it's a private school, you can, you can commute. Right. Um, and I don't know. The extent of the of, eight. I don't know what scholar, if there's scholarships for some of these high school Catholic schools or Christian schools, I don't know if they do that or not, because technically, you know, it's private. So you got to pay a tuition. It's not funded by tax money. So I don't know if some of those kids if somehow they work it out with the school where they don't, you know, they get a disc. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if you guys can. I, I think there's a little bit of gray area there. That's for sure. Um, I know Corey is just going to spit it out, but five out of the 16 teams in the championship are parochial schools. I mean, oh, it's like year, that. Every, that yeah. It's like it that. Every, it's like that every single year. I mean, you got nearly a third of the teams, the recruiting from their area and you you, you see the same thing in basketball. You know, they, they got great teams. It makes for a great championship. But, you know, sometimes you get a lopsided state championship. And most of those lopsided state championships is because you got a parochial school rolling over some small schools. So it's it's unfortunate. And I think it's something, you know, there's a lot of adaptive ideas going on in sports right now. And I think the MHSA needs to adjust their philosophy. Um, I think what they do is great, although another discussion would be every team makes the playoffs. I know some steam, some states like Indiana, every football team makes the playoffs like they did in Michigan last year with COVID. But I, I do think the, the 
the parochial schools, they deserve their own league. I think it would make it fair, but I mean, who am I? I'm just a guy off the street. Yeah, the the everyone <laughs> makes the <laughs> the everyone makes the playoff concept definitely a conversation uh, piece for a lot of people last year because obviously we experimented with that here in the state of Michigan with COVID, uh, so people didn't have to worry about scheduling with all the cancellations. Um, and there's an argument to be had for it. I mean, every other sport, everyone makes the playoffs. I mean, baseball, everyone makes the playoffs. Basketball, everyone makes the playoffs. Um, I would argue that for football. I like the idea that the regular season means something in terms of the postseason, but I thought the, high school the, football, I thought the playoff every... system, the brand new playoff system that was in, implemented this year, I really yes. liked. Terrible, so people... terrible, terrible, terrible. You didn't like it? There was some teams that were six and three that didn't make it, and there was teams that were like four and five that made it. I like that. I like that. Um, if you now, I'm not saying it's perfect. I think it still has some things that need to be worked out. But I like the idea that if you play a tougher schedule um, and you still manage to win uh, with that tougher schedule, that even if you don't quite win five games, and I know there's an argument. I was going to say, I would say you have to losing. That's that's the same problem. That's the same problem in college football. Cincinnati is number four tonight. They so, but this, big time. I mean, uh, it's so it, subjective to who you play and who you beat. You know as well as I do, you can't compare games and you can't compare the opponent at different points in the season. Yeah, but here's the here's the glaring difference though between the MHSAA playoffs and compare it to like college football. There's only sixty something teams in each division. That's it. Yeah. So like Division One, th- half. In every division, half the teams are getting in anyway. It's true. You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, if yeah. you go through and look at the teams that miss the playoffs in each division, like you said, there were a couple six and three, but if you add up all the teams that won six games, no teams that won seven missed the playoffs. If you won seven or more games, you made the playoffs. But from top to bottom, division one through division eight, the number of teams that missed the playoffs that won six games was, like, four or five, and – if you won six games in D1, D2, and D3, you got in. I think D4 or 5 was the first division where a 6-3 and three team missed. Um, so, and that's just, they're valuing some of those harder schedules with bigger yeah. schools and things like that. So, it, it's it's a flawed, the new system's not perfect, but I, now, Flint Powers Catholic went th- three and six or two and seven. I think they were three and six and got in the playoffs in division five, but they played four D1 schools four divisions bigger than them. they played. They're in the same conference as Davison, Grand Blank, and uh, Lapeer. They just they just changed conferences for next year. Did they really? Yeah. They I, don't, did, I yeah. never because, understood why they were yeah, playing Yeah, because they're getting – yeah, they're just – they can't compete. They can't play with conferences. those schools. But yeah. so I, I people were upset about that, but I'm like, dude, they're playing schools four divisions bigger than them. They have all this D1 talent. So I, I get it. Um there's arguments definitely to be had both ways, but I, I, there's a lot of people who didn't like the playoff system this year, but I thought it was a, a step in the right direction. I mean, you could take us, for example, you know, coaching at Grand Ledge. We didn't, you know, we started the season strong at four and zero, but we didn't really play anyone very good. We finished six and three, beat the teams we should lost to the best teams we played. We almost missed the playoffs. We were the third or fourth team, uh, from the bottom, 28, 28 or 29. We we're pretty close. And to unfortunately, our conference, we don't play any Division One schools. Holt's the only one. one. Yeah. Holt. Holt. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Con- congratulations. You get to play Rockford at Rockford. First game. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yep. Nine, nine times. <laughs> Happy birthday. Nine, yeah. Nine times in 29 years or 30 years we've played them in the playoffs. So yeah, it's all right. The comments have pulled through here and there, but the Rams, the Rams had a three good times. Team. We're three and six against mm-hmm. them all the time. All right. Uh, let's move on here to division four. Honestly, division four has one of the most intriguing matchups yes. and possibly one of the best teams in the state, regardless of division, uh, in mm-hmm. Hudsonville unity Christian. Uh, I was texting, I think both of you guys about this last weekend, uh, Hudsonville unity Christian has quite the numbers. They are the highest scoring team in the state, regardless of division. 751 points. They are averaging 50 points a game. All right. That's, I believe, more than 50 points a game. So one of you wants to do the quick math, 751 divided by 13. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure that might be right around 50 or more. What do you got? 50.0. 50 even? 751 divided by, yeah, 50 points per game. How about 165 divided by 13? That's what they're giving up. That's another impressive. 13, 12, 12.7. Averaging 50, giving up 13. That is impressive. They have scored 50, 58, 65, 57, 54, 69, 55, 67, 79 in the district championship game on Grand Rapids Christian. That's probably the most impressive win to beat Grand Rapids Christian 79 and 21. Edwardsburg, who they play in the semifinal, they beat 58. Powerhouse Edwardsburg. Edwardsburg's a heck of a D4 program, man. They have, they've been to the playoffs for 12 straight years. They've won a couple state championships, and they beat them 58-8. to eight. Um, I am assuming a unanimous pick for us here, but this Hudsonville Unity Christian team is incredible. My issue is that Chelsea, who also has great history, really plays nobody. Chelsea does I mean, not have a very is... tough schedule. No. no. And they struggled with Freeland. Detroit Country Day was probably a good game. I don't know anything about them, but they're normally good. Country um, Day Country Day has, has some decent history and been to some state championships. That's probably their best win uh, in the regional championship game. I know Freeland has had some good seasons, but their regular season schedule for Chelsea is pretty – Soft average, yeah. No, no offense to them, but a part of it's their conference. All offense, them, fuck them. <laughs> their <laughs> conference, <laughs> their <laughs> conference is pretty weak. Um, I just think that Hudsonville Unity Christian is gonna roll them. I, 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 again, like you just mentioned, Chelsea has had quite a bit of success themselves since 1999. They missed the playoffs once, they've been to the state championship, I think, three or four times now. Um, I believe, did they win the state championship in 2000? I think they did. They've lost it in recent years. I thought maybe they didn't win it. Maybe they've gone and lost it every time. They've gone and lost it every time uh, in recent years. They have not actually won it. But they've gone a few times. I I just think that Hudsonville Unity Christian is going to be too too much. I, I really do. Um. Hudsonville Unity Christian was just in the state championship in 2018, and they beat Portland 42 to seven in 2018. Mm-hmm. I know this is a completely different team, but uh, Hudsonville Unity Christian too. I mean, th- this is a team that didn't play football until 2004, 2003. So pretty impressive program that's been built in just less than 20 years. But that's my pick. I don't know if you guys want to add anything else. I agree. Fill me in, Unity. By 40. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, They're going to roll. I, they beat one of the best teams in their division by 50 last week. So I, They're going to roll. I wouldn't be surprised. So, All right, moving on to Division 3 then. Another local team. Uh, we had two local teams playing in the Division 3 semifinals. So there were five Greater Lansing teams that made the semifinals. I think I saw in the LSJ since the CAAC was formed, uh, consolidated the CAC and a couple of our local conferences back in 2002 or three, whenever it was, this is the first time ever that four CAAC schools made the semifinals the same year. So we had Portland, Lansing Catholic, DeWitt, and Mason. Uh, Mason had their best season in school history. Very cool for them. Their first 10 win season in school history, first semifinal appearance. Unfortunately, they ran to one of the best teams in the entire state, regardless of division. Uh, maybe, one of the best teams, probably in the Midwest. I was just going to say, maybe yeah. in the Midwest. Yep. Yep. We were just talking up Hudsonville Unity Christian, <laughs> but Detroit Martin Luther King uh, might be one of the best teams in the Midwest. Their only loss in the season is at Carmel, Indiana on a Hail Mary. The first last game of the second year. play. <laughs> last second play. Yeah, by two points, Hail Mary, first game of the year. Uh, they beat Muskegon Mona Shores by 21. They beat Kaz Tech twice. Uh, they've beat River Rouge, who is the state champions two years ago. Uh, so pretty impressive team. Now their opponent is another area team in DeWitt, the defending Division Three state champs. Uh, DeWitt is having a very impressive year. We were just talking about scoring. DeWitt has scored 614 points. 
Um, so they're averaging something like 40 points per game, more than 40 points per game. Um, so they're having a heck of a season. DeWitt's biggest problem all year um, is they tend to give up quite a few points. Um, they've had more than 20 scored on them. One, two, three, four, five times. Um, and Detroit Martin Luther King defensively uh, has not given up quite as many points as DeWitt has. So I, this is an intriguing matchup. Let's uh, let's have, how about Corey? How about you run us off on this? One mm, I haven't started yet. Oh, oh Brett hasn't started one. Brett, you started. Go ahead. Right? No, I it's, thought, it's okay. I, I thought just, I had you start I'm, one. I'm itching. I'm itching for my pick. It's King. They're Detroit King for a reason. King of every division they play in. They're gonna. They're gonna win. Dewitt's. Dewitt's a great team. They're a great program. Rob Zimmerman. He's been coaching there for well over a decade. They run a decades. great program. He's been there Two since decades. ninety-seven or ninety-eight. Yeah. Yeah, going on three decades. Heck of a program at Dewitt, but this King program, you just they have so many athletes rolling through there. It's a public school, but it's a parochial school. Um, it really is. I, I, they're going to win by two scores at least, you know, Mona Shores gave him a fit in the last couple of years, but, uh, Brady Rose from Mona Shores is gone. They played Mona Shores again this year and rolled them. Um, DeWitt's got a couple of guys going D1 this year, but I, I don't see King losing this game. I, I just, I just don't. Corey, I think it's, I, I, think, it's, sorry, I think it's a bad, I think it's the best matchup in the state finals though. I will say that the D zone. So, who we should give a shout out to, um, obviously our Tate podcast, Baker. our Tate, Tate, our D local or our, our uh, D zone friend who's working for the D zone. Uh, the D zone obviously does all things high school football in Michigan while we're over here doing all things football in the state of Michigan. Uh, but we got to give them a shout out. Um, you know, they, uh, they have ranked these teams and their rankings all year have been pretty consistent in terms of week to week. Uh, haven't changed a ton. And for the majority of the year, they've had DeWitt and Martin Luther King in the top five. Um, and coming into this last game, they now have them one and two. And I think regardless of division, I think that's pretty reasonable to to, to have those two teams as easily two of the top five teams in the entire school, entire state, regardless of division. So, uh, Corey, you want to make your pick and then I'll make mine? Yep. Um, I kind of want to lean towards DeWitt, but I'm going to pick MLK. Just for the fact I don't – DeWitt's given up points all year. I don't see them stopping uh, MLK's quarterback as well as the rest of the talent they have on the field. So I'm going to go with MLK, which will probably – I kind of agree with Brett. It'll be a two- to three-score game. All right, just to be contrarian and because someone's got to gotta set the others apart here, I'm going to go with DeWitt. Um I agree with you guys in everything you're saying. I think you're both 100% right, and – I think DeWitt is going to have their biggest test of the year by far. Um, the DeWitt team last year that won the state championship, obviously in a weird year, but that DeWitt team also had a very impressive win over Muskegon, and they also rolled the defending state champs in River Rouge. That DeWitt team, though, had – and they rolled De La Salle in a non-conference game. That DeWitt team, though, had a lights-out defense in 12 games, gave up 80 points. Uh, this DeWitt team has given up 200 points – in 13 games, one more game, giving up 120 points and only one more game, 120 more points. Um, so that has been their weakness from last year's team. They lost some linebackers and D Lyman, who were very talented seniors last year. Uh, now their offense, I think, is even better. Um, they've scored more points um, and had an even, an even higher scoring offense this year than they did last year. Uh, this is actually Rob Zimmerman's highest scoring offense he has ever had. This is the first team he has ever had. It's impressive. Yep. It's the first team Zimmerman has ever had to score 600 points in a season. Um, and you're talking about Zimmerman had three straight state title appearances in 0203, 04. None of those teams hit 600 state title appearance in 2013. That team didn't even hit 500. Uh, and the team last year obviously only played 12 games, but that team only hit 496. So the highest, and they still have one more game to play. I mean, this team might end up scoring over 650 points. Hot take, Rob Zimmerman retires. That's a, convers that's a conversation to be had. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he won, he retires. But there's rumors. There have been rumors. 
I don't know about why? Reti- why? I don't know about retiring. There's rumors circulating that he might go college. He's been. But. This has been rumors for a year. I don't really know what he has for juniors coming into next season, but his senior class is super strong. So if you're going to bounce, yeah, he's going to. I mean, he's going to still have talent, but this senior class uh, has what four or five D1 prospects. Yeah, is he three, 50 three or D1 he, commits. C50 or C younger? He's in his fifties. He's in his fifties. Yeah, he's got. Yeah, I mean, you've seen that man walk. Are... He doesn't even have hips anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's a John Gruden. He's a CAC John Gruden. <laughs> yeah, I uh I half the think, ball cut though. I think this is gonna be uh one of Zimmerman and DeWitt's biggest tests they've ever had. Uh obviously their sixth state championship appearance since he's been there, opportunity to win their second, second in a row as well. Um, over one of the best D2, D3, MLK tends to move up between D2 and D3, depending on enrollment, best programs in the state in terms of that division. Um but I'm going to pick DeWitt just because I, I, I really do think DeWitt has a chance. Um, I think if DeWitt can score quickly, which they have all year, and find a way uh, to create some term, turnovers for King, um, then maybe they can find a way to pull off a one-score win, a close game. So, all right, let's move on. we got two divisions left here. Let's wrap things up, and then we'll talk briefly about Michigan, Michigan State, and end this sucker. All right, Division Two, another incredible team. Excuse me, and incredible matchup. Two Traverse, two of them. Traverse City yeah, Se- Central. Uh, Traverse City Central is a team. This is why I think DeWitt's impressive. DeWitt played Traverse City Central the first game of the year at the Big House and beat Traverse City Central 47 to 27. Since then, Traverse City Central not only has not lost since, they have scored over 600 points since then. They've actually scored more points than DeWitt <laughs> on the season. Uh, very Now, I will say this. Traverse City Central plays a pretty awful regular season schedule. Um, they play a lot of smaller D3, D4, and even D5 schools up north. Because but they beat the they Chiefs just, off of South Lion. Oh, I and South Lion was they, I didn't finish. I didn't finish. Hold they on. also just – okay, I'll let you finish. Well, I was just going to say they did schedule a couple tough non-conference ske- uh, games to end the year. They beat Brother Rice 56-13, to which was an eye-opening win. Uh, they went and beat North Farmington 56-0, to zero, and then they have had some very, very impressive playoff wins. They beat a red-hot Caledonia team 42-14 to 14 in the regional. And then, like you said, South Lion was, I think, undefeated 56-20. to 20. Uh, So some very, very impressive numbers. Unfortunately, they are going up against Warren De La Salle, going back to Brett's argument, Catholic schools, parochial schools. Uh, Warren De La Salle was back-to-back state champions in 17 and 18 and then had to forfeit the playoffs in 2019 because of some uh, disciplinary Brooms, problems. Yeah, some very messy <laughs> some brooms. problems in the program. <laughs> uh, last year, De La Salle was uh, the, I think, only team who made it to the state championship with a losing record because everyone made the playoffs last year. They went 2-4 and four in the regular season and lost the state title by six points to Mona Shores. Uh, very interesting matchup because – Brother or Warndale Sal is undefeated and beat teams like Brother Rice, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Detroit Catholic Central. Now, three of their wins are over Detroit Jesuit. They played Detroit Jesuit three times, and Detroit Jesuit Ew. is like the redheaded stepchild of that Detroit Catholic League. Um, in football, in football, correct. Um, I don't know, Brett, you want to kick us off first again? We'll give you back to back leads here. Yeah, first off, so Traverse City Central and I believe Traverse City West are both joining a Saginaw conference for next year. I heard about that. Interesting. So it's interesting. Yeah, interesting. We brought up strength of schedule, but I mean, you still play half your games at home. So, yep. But nonetheless, Joshua Burnham, remember the name. This kid, he's committed to Notre Dame. He's the second Notre Dame commit that's playing yep, in the state championships this year. This kid is the truth, man. I've seen some highlights of him. He plays like six positions. He just runs over kids. I mean, he's he huge. looks like he looks like <laughs> he looks like a division one player division playing division eight football in high school. Like he just runs through guys. He's projected to play linebacker in college. Right now he's I think he's I heard up, that. Yep. 
he's up for a national finalist. He's one of six people in the nation that are um, awarded the the Butkus Award, which is the best linebacker in high school yep. football. That oh, announcement will be on December 7th. So he's top six linebacker in the nation. Um, 247 has him ranked 117, four star. And this kid, he's, he's going to lead this team to a title. I've seen some highlights. Like I'd mentioned earlier, D zone Tate, he's watched him a few times. He just watched him roll over Caledonia in the snow. That was a couple weeks ago. Very, this very guy, impressive. I, you know, normally in football, it's more than a one player that leads the team and basketball. You get one good guy that they can bring the team to the state championship. But this guy, I mean, when you play six positions, he's, he's going to win this thing for the Trojans pop the Trojans, baby. He's like, he's like a Matt Bonet. He's going to win it for him. A little more athletic. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. I am. I love Matt. He's a good guy, but this kid's a freak. I'm also going with TC central. Oh, decisions decisions i'm trying to decide do i be the contrarian again or not you don't you have a cousin no, you had a cousin I, that coach at warren de la salle come on i i i did my cousin was the varsity baseball coach olivia the with the refill look at olivia <laughs> nice <laughs> job, olivia to walk olivia. over to my house and give Woo. me one yeah olivia you're wanted <laughs> um man uh I, I really want to be the contrarian just to kind of break this podcast open a little bit because we have so many open, unanimous baby. picks here. Find it. But that Traverse City Central team, I do think they've had an impressive run here. I think Warren De La Salle, while they also have had some very impressive seasons recently, I think the Catholic League is down a bit this year, the Detroit Catholic League, because DCC got rocked uh twice this year by Chippewa Valley their first game and West Bloomfield beat them by 14 in the district finals uh St. Mary's also not a very strong season from them and Brother Rice not a very strong season from them what is that what you point out over there Archie just found a spot in the bed oh a little Archie so I I just feel like the Detroit Catholic League while I don't think they're not impressive anymore. I think that they are kind of slowing down a bit. So I just don't think Warren De La Salle's wins and schedule has been quite as impressive as Traverse City Central. Uh, I think you're talking about a Traverse City Central program that's having its best season since it won the state championship in 1988. It's their first 10 win season since then. First time they've been to a state championship since then. Um, so it, it's been a while since they've had that success. That was also around the time. Uh, it was only a few years before they split the, the, into two high schools. They split into two high schools in 1997. Um, and then the talent, and then they had a lot of problems, TC Central and TC West for a while. Um, I'm going to go with TC Central. I'm going to have to. I, I just I don't think Warren De La Salle has had quite as an impressive run as TC Central has had here. So, all right. And- Real quick, anytime oh, yeah, your quarterback is offered by Bama, you're probably going to win the state title in Michigan. Yeah, I can't argue with that, man. Pretty hard to argue with that. All right, same with MLK. <laughs> yeah, Dante hopefully he goes Moore. to the He's only a junior. Hopefully he goes to Michigan though. That Dante Moore is a junior. Devin Gardner has been working that for a while, so hopefully it pays off. Um. All right. Let's wrap up the MHSAA playoff picks here with Division One, biggest division in the state of Michigan. Obviously, if you're from different states, the divisions are organized a little bit differently. Sometimes one is the smallest. We have Rochester Adams, uh, who had not uh, had as much success in recent years as they had in the early parts of the 2000s. They won a state championship back in 2003, um, were a D2 school for a while. Um, They were actually the smallest school in Division I this year by enrollment. They only have Hmm. two D1 athletes on their team and they have had a heck of a run they play in probably one of the tougher conferences in the state um in that oakland conference now they don't play in the best division um but they do have quite a non-conference schedule they beat west bloomfield they beat a solid oxford team uh detroit renaissance who upset Kaz tech um, they beat Lapeer, Oxford, West Bloomfield, and a red hot Grand Blank team in the playoffs. Uh, they're playing. Hot. Oh, absolutely. They're playing Grand Belleville. Is good. Yeah. 
They are playing Belleville, who has come up short. <laughs> God, you got to feel bad for Belleville, man. Belleville has come up short about three times in the last four years. Belleville lost in the semifinal by a point last year. Uh, they lost by three points in the semifinals in 2019. They lost by 12 points in the semifinals in 2018. They just keep coming up short. So this is their first time in school history getting to a state championship. So pretty cool for Belleville. Belleville has 17 D1 prospects on their football team. Their Hot quarterback team. is a freshman, and he's got a rocket launcher, launcher bazooka for yes. an arm. I don't know if you've yes. seen him throw the ball, but he's got a missile launcher. So... <laughs> Um, That's a nice way of putting it. I will, <laughs> I will kick this one off. I also think it's very interesting. Um, you guys were started to mention Graham Blank. I think it's very crazy that Graham Blank is the second biggest school in the state of Michigan by enrollment. That the smallest D one school crushed them last week, forty to twenty. At Rochester. Ash. Those Impressive those wins. Graham Blank is those are some athletes. They won the state championship in basketball and baseball. The state championship in baseball, semifinalists in football. I mean, that's it was, no so well, much of a team. Those guys are battle tested. They know. Well, how to win and the even though game. they didn't make it to the state championship in football, this was their best season in school history. Ooh. First time they, in the semifinals, first twelve win season, which is insane to think about because they had Heisman Trophy winner Mark Ingram that played for them in two thousand nine, former Alabama and. Current NFL player, Mark Ingram. Very impressive win for Rochester Adams. All right, I'll kick this. I can kick this one off. Um, I got Rochester Adams, man. I, I was very impressed by that Grand Blank win. Uh, Grand Blank had rolled like everybody this year. Uh, they had two close wins. They had a few. Their first three non-conference games were pretty close, but they beat Davison 43-7. to They beat Lapeer 30-6. to uh, they beat Rockford, who had a very impressive quarterback in Zach Ahern. Um, they crushed Howell. Howell at one point was undefeated on the season. I know they kind of dropped a few games late, um, but I am very impressed with Rochester Adams. I think they pull the upset. I would imagine most people have Belleville as the favorite with all those D1 players and a Belleville team that's come up short recently and really looking for that first state championship win. Uh, but I'm going to go with Rochester Adams. Belleville gets their first state title. They've been rolling people all year. Um, like I said, that quarterback, I watched some clips on him. That kid's got a – he'll be a five-star quarterback recruit, another one coming out of the Detroit area. So I'm going to go with Belleville. You know, Vince, you mentioned that the Detroit Catholic League is a little soft this year. You almost wonder if some of those kids stayed in their Rochester area and attended the local Rochester Adams High School. Um, but <laughs> – I, I mean, pretty big. If you look at their records from 2008 to 2021, crazy to see the 13 and 0. Um, and they hadn't had more than eight or nine wins in the last 12 years. And now all of a sudden they're 13 and 0 in a state title. I think something's to be said that something's going on over there in the last year. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree. But, you know, I'm kind of battling hype over heart right now. You got the heart of the Rochester Adams team. It's probably a brotherhood. Those guys have all lived together. Belleville probably playing the transfer portal pretty good. Um, I think ultimately I got to go with Rochester Adams. You know, I think that Vincent Gray, he's a cornerback for the Michigan Wolverines. He's going to bring the Wolverines a victory this weekend. Former Rochester Adam corner. I'm, I'm going with Rochester Adams. All right. Look Pulling the upset. All right, baby. That's what, I, that's what I'm Bold strategy, of the hype, baby. Hard over Old strategy, high. Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> See if it pays off for him. See if it pays off. Well, all right. Uh, so Corey's got all the picks written down there. I don't think we had a lot of varying opinions for quite a few of them, but uh, I think there's enough there where we could hopefully have a winner. Was there only three or four where we had people who three. did three that weren't unanimous picks? That's all we needed, though. One each. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> 